So this video is all about how to turn a new idea into a marketable product. It's really a journey that I've developed over the last 12 years of running a product design agency to be specifically orientated to support startups on a relatively tight budget to develop and turn their new ideas into something they can sell. And this is the overall process. It might look quite complicated, but please do watch until the end of the video. There's some really key information throughout the whole of this video on how you can minimize your time frame for development and how you can minimize your overall costs as well. Please also hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified when I launch new videos, which are gonna dig into the different topics on this in more detail if that's what you wanna know more about. So, without further ado, let's get stuck in. So this bit at the top here is really the feasibility part of a new project, and it's absolutely critical. I always think the more time you spend here, the better. Otherwise, you might send your whole project off in the wrong direction, and then if you change direction later on, it's gonna cost you way more in money, effort, time, um, and that's not really a great result. So invest in this bit is critical. Now, the main things you're probably gonna to want to look at are technical feasibility, if you don't know whether your idea is actually gonna be possible, reverse engineering, if you've already got a product that you want to basically take apart and then rework to improve, either from a margin perspective or a durability perspective or a functionality perspective. Um, and I've got a whole other video on reverse engineering, so check that out. Or it might be that actually manufacturing feasibility is critical. Finally, you might actually not know that the, the solution you're looking at is the right solution. You might want to do an innovation workshop with some creative designers to see what other options are there before I dig into to my solution. So once you've kind of done all of that and also developed a really good project brief, then that's the time to get some concept development done. It might be something you can do in-house. might be that you need to employ an external product design agency to take all this information uh, and then turn it into the right kind of concept. I'm assuming, by the way, that you've already got market insight or you wouldn't be doing this process. But if you haven't, it's also worth trying to talk to your target market at that stage to get market insight through developing something that you're, the people who are going to buy your product actually want. Various ways of doing that. You don't actually have to reveal your confidential idea to get some market insight. So maybe you come up with a new Moses basket, for example, for newborn babies. Well, you could just do a general questionnaire or some focus groups with a whole load of new mums about their experiences of using Moses baskets with their babies. You don't have to tell them that you've got an amazing new Moses basket that, I don't know, is going to rock the baby to sleep automatically and manage the environment and the humidity automatically or uh, have a heart rate monitor built in or whatever else. You don't have to give away that kind of idea. But what you can do is just ask them in general what they want, what features they feel are lacking, what they're worried about when their baby's in the Moses basket, that kind of thing. But that could give you really interesting insight and help you steer the project direction to be something that people really want to buy. So once you've done all of that, into the concept development stage, this is where things like kind of ergonomics and styling and potential ways of performing your unique functionality can be looked at by a skilled product designer to create a concept that you can then take further forward. It might be best to look at two or three concepts, or it might be you've got a very clear idea, and really that time's best spent further developing one particular concept. Once that's done, again, you might want to go back to your target market at that point. At this stage, if you're showing them sketches and things, you're going to want to look at how you can protect that concept. Often that's best done under a confidentiality agreement, but you might want to file an early stage patent or register design to protect it. Reasons why that might not be the best plan, um, and do check out my intellectual property video or my patenting videos so that you can actually learn at what point is best to patent and what the downsides are of finding patent protection too early. But the critical thing really, I think, is to get some feedback from your target market so you make sure you're constantly designing for your consumer, not for yourself. You might want to build a basic physical model that might just be out of card, it might be out of disassembled other products just to prove the basic concepts and actually start having something tangible that you can play with and test and go, well, actually, it needs to be a bit bigger here, or this doesn't feel quite right, or it doesn't fit where it needs to, or whatever it is. And it might be also that styling is really critical um, to your brand and to your new product launch, and therefore that's actually really important. You want to, might want to look at mood boards and potential materials and all that kind of thing. 
Then we get into design for prototyping, and this really is where we're tying down all of the details that we possibly can at this stage. So this might be done using computer-aided design if you have a hard plastic product or a TPU, kind of elastomer-based product. If you've got a textile-based product, this often isn't best done with computer-aided design, but instead is often done with digitally enhanced detailed sketch work, because that's often much more cost-effective than trying to create a computer a design virtual model of a soft product. Either way, you've got to get to a point where you've got a much more detailed concept before you then go into physical prototyping. And this really is where the kind of iterative design process takes over. So it's really about prototyping, testing and confirming it with your market, um, prototype refinement, reviewing where you're at and, and whether it's all functioning correctly, whether you're happy with all the ergonomics of it, all that kind of thing. And potentially you might end up going around this loop two or three times to get the right product out the end of it. Some companies go through 10, 12, 20 even loops around this process to refine their product before they move it forward. Often if you're a small startup business, you, know, you haven't got the, the budget to be able to do that. So you're going to want to work with a design agency that works very efficiently. So you can get this done maybe in two or three iterative development loops and then you can crack on we're getting into the final stages of development. Now these stages really are where you take this prototype that's developed and tested and is, is the right solution and you're preparing it for manufacture. So you probably want to find a manufacturer, create a manufacturing specification, finalize the design, refine it where possible to make it more cost effective for mass production and then you'll be ready to go into production. It's worth saying that in my company we actually often work with the manufacturer much earlier on. So if they've got any particular processes or materials or whatever that they want to use, I think it would be really good that we include that early. There is challenges with that. It's not always possible. Not always manufacturers are willing to do that. Um, but if you can, I think it, it can pay huge dividends to involve the manufacturer earlier in this process. Now, there are three other streams running alongside the core product development process. And these are the kind of IP protection which includes patenting, maybe registered designs. Um, and if you've got a brand, you might want to bring in trademarks as well to protect your IP. This is roughly where they fit within the process. Do watch my patenting video, which will go through the timings within the product development journey that makes sense for you in terms of your patent applications. Electronics runs roughly alongside product development. So once the concept's defined, you're going to want to start defining the electronics brief and the functionality, and then you're into a prototype loop with your electronics um, as well to test and refine that functionality, button positions, brightnesses of LEDs, screen types, all of that kind of stuff. And once tested and confirmed again, you're then going to go through a process where that's productionized and made ready for mass production. There's quite a lot of certification and testing that goes on with electronics, CE marking, testing in terms of interference, all that kind of stuff needs to happen, EMC testing. And then when all of that's done, again, that's then ready the mass manufacture. Final stream that runs alongside your product development journey is branding. Now this really depends on the product. If your product is all about the look and the feel uh, and your brand is all about the aesthetic, then this probably needs to take quite a place and start very early on in the process. So brand direction probably needs to happen alongside concept work. Brand concepts and things will feed into your styling phase so they all need to be done around the same time. Packaging might be critical as well to your overall look and feel and customer experience. And again, you know, in which case, get packaging concept work and prototypes and that kind of thing to start and run alongside the, the prototyping of your product. Now, equally, it might be that this isn't too important um, and your product is more about the functionality or the technology. And in which case, this can often shift much more towards the end of the overall process. So that gives you a really good overview of the whole process. I suggest you watch my patenting video right now because that gives you insight into how to save money in your patenting process and also when within this journey is best to file your patents for you and your project. Please do check out the description below. There's more links with lots more information. Also, do add some comments if you've got any questions or any of this isn't clear or there's any other videos you'd like me to do.